Hey everybody, it's Shamika. I wanted to discuss business credit, personal credit, and bank credit. Now, how many of you have heard of bank credit? But yes, there is such a thing. All right, so really simple. Most of you already know what personal credit is. And for those who do not, we're not just talking about your actual personal credit reports. I'm actually talking about your score. Um, you know your scores range from 350 to 850. If you are trying to obtain business credit, the minimum that you should be applying for credit with would be a 580. Now that's actually very low, but I have seen it done with a 580. The higher your score, the better the chances you have of getting approved for the accounts that you want, okay? So there are gonna be some things that are going to make you ineligible, okay? Now, on your personal credit, if you have a great score, but you have a ton of inquiries, you're gonna get denied. Why? It looks risky, okay? So you have to, as a business owner, you have to look at yourself the same way banks look at you. And banks look at you as high risk, low risk. Which risk are you? in order to be a low risk to the bank, okay? And this is more than just your personal score. You're going to need low utilization. You're going to need a um, a good, healthy um, credit profile, meaning you cannot have an 850 score, have no trade lines reporting, and think that the bank is just going to automatically extend you credit. They have to be able to see what your ability is when it comes to repaying your debts, okay? So you have to make sure you have that healthy credit profile. You gotta make sure you got a great score. You need to make sure you have not a lot of inquiries. And when I say not a lot, I mean anywhere between three and five, and that's within the last 24 months, okay? And mind you, inquiries stay on your credit report for 25 months. So you definitely wanna make sure that it is looking healthy. All right now for your um, personal, excuse me, I said personal already for your business credit score. The business credit score is going to vary because there are three different bureaus, just like there are on the personal credit. There is Experian, Equifax, TransUnion. On the business side, there's Experian, Equifax, and Dun and Bradstreet. Dun and Bradstreet is the one that I would say is ultimately the most important. They're the oldest credit bureau. Um, they have a lot of weight that goes along with their name. So if you have a great score with them, when you try to go to banks or you try to go to places to get loans, they really uh, take Dun & Bradstreet's information into uh, account when they're making their decision when it comes to giving you money. So business credit score ranges a little differently here. So um, what I love about it is it allows you the opportunity to make your uh, scoring lower, the limits are lower, the, the ranges are lower, but the, you can make your um, scores, you can reach those goals a lot faster than you could on the personal credit side. Dun & Bradstreet has um, zero to 100. So um, that means that you can, zero is you're not paying on time, you're late, 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 late. But you can pay before your bill is due and still get a minimum of a 70, a 75, or even an 80. Um, that is what you want. A 70 means 700. It's equivalent to a 700 FICO score. A 75 is equivalent to 750 FICO score and the same with 885, excuse me, same with 80 and 85. They're equivalent to 800 and 850 FICO score. So Dun & Bradstreet does allow you to shine, really, really shine, um, whereas you might not be able to do that on your personal credit side, you can really do it on the business credit side with Dun & Bradstreet though. Now you have your um, Experian and Equifax and their ranges are um, also a lot less. The ranges are a lot less. I think they go to um, 300 and 500. Um, you can also make those high um, scores just by doing the same thing. You gotta find companies that report to these bureaus, but as long as you find companies that report and you can make your usage, um, uh, keep your usage still, 
with 30% uh, or less on utilization. They do Equifax and Experian. They do follow the utilization the same as they do on the personal credit side. Um, that's why I love Dun & Bradstreet is because they really don't take all of that stuff into consideration. They just really look at if you're paying on time or if you're late. Experian, Equifax, they need to look at all this other stuff. And to me, it's just a way of um, keeping your score low. But hey, it's the game. You got to play it. So what you want to do is if you're going to use that car or account or whatever it is, yes, you're going to try to keep your utilization low. If you can't because you are a business, it happens. It's okay. The name of the game is to pay that account down and keep it paid down and on time or before time so that you can keep those scores up. Because remember, when you're trying to go and get money from banks and, and, and you're trying to get a, a lines of credit ex extended from other companies, they're going to look at your report and they're going to want to see if you've been paying on time and if you've been um, if you're stretched out of your utilization, that makes you seem risky also. If you notice, um, when you go on Dun & Bradstreet or even uh, Experian or Equifax, if you're a business owner, before you actually extend credit to someone, you have the ability to pull a report on that company so that you can see if you want to go into business with them. So if you're a company or a business owner that wants to start extending credit to other individuals, you can do that. They have a tool that you can check to see if this company is risky or not. It is very, very important to identify risk ahead of time um, just because it, you want to make sure you can get paid, okay? So the last score is bank um, credit. And a lot of people are like, bank credit? I never heard of bank credit. And yes, it might be um, a terminology that is used differently depending on where you go, but the banks absolutely give you some type of score. And it's usually ranged just between one and five. And what that does is this score is their way of not saying but saying how much money you have in your account. Now, you ever looked at a credit application, and this is, I'm just talking to this from business owners. You ever looked at a credit application and it asks you for a trade reference and a bank reference? Well, the trade reference is easy. I'm sure you guys know what that is. They may call somebody that you're doing business with before and um, know they can't tell them everything about your company, but they can at least let them know that, hey, yeah, we're doing business together. Um, yes, I uh, this person pays on time or this person has a, you know, $5,000 credit limit or whatever. Okay. So that's what they do with the trade reference. But when it comes to a bank reference, when they actually put that information down, your account number and all of that, they technically are not supposed to say how much money does so-and-so have in their account. That's none of their business. But what they've done is they've come up with a score from one to five and one to, and I'm going to put, and I'm actually going to put it below um, in the comments so you guys each can be able to see this. So you can see the ranges that you have to have in your account to even start um, uh, generating some type, I say respect in the bank, but if you, you got a bank account and you got a couple hundred dollars in there, you're not really going to get a whole lot of respect from these people. Okay. They just don't. But when you start bringing major money into their bank, 20, 10, 15,000 and more and more, and this is, you know, that was on a low scale, but when you start bringing money into like that, they start generating this number on you. So when people start calling for that bank reference and they ask about such and such LLC or such and such corporation, they can say, well, this person's a three or this person's a two. And that gives them a range of about the uh, amount of money that you keep in your account. Now, mind you, this is supposed to be based off of an average um, 30, uh, excuse me, three month thing. Banks like to work on cycles of like 90 days. So um, they usually like to take a little average balance and this is how much you've kept in your account for the last three months. And that's how they come up with that score that they provide for you when they you fill out the application. So it is important to have a business bank account. So if you don't have one in your business, you definitely need to get one. But now you see why they put that on that application. So there really is no way to go about things and think you're going to escape unless you're just not putting any information down on the paper. But they're going to find out if you can pay your bills on time. They're going to find out if you got money coming, if you money in your bank, sitting in your bank. Are you negative? What's going on? Um, everything has, it may not be a score, but it's definitely a, an, an identifier. And if you're not going to be um, getting used to that, that I think you're going to have a problem going, going further along the line when it comes to business because everything in business, especially when it comes to credit and money, there's going to be some type of identifier because banks want to make sure that they're not going to lose any money, even though they do all the time. 
But if they can stand not to, that's the name of the game. They want to keep as much money as they can. And they want to know, are you a high risk person or are you a low risk? So if you don't have at a minimum of $5,000 sitting in your bank account, in your business bank account, I would highly, highly encourage that you get that money and you take that money and you let that money sit in your account for three months so that you can have that average balance of $3,000, $5,000 sitting in your account. So now when you go out and you're trying to get these um, larger accounts that your credit may not be that perfect, but you want this Home Depot and they're asking for a trade reference or you want those John Deere tractors or you want to get on with United Rentals or, uh, or something like that. And they want to start asking about the money you got in your account because they want to know before they give you a twenty five or $30,000 credit line. It's a part of the process, people. So don't feel like they're being intrusive. It's just what they have to do. It's all about risk. Put yourself in the bank's shoes again, as I stated. Would you want to loan money to somebody that you can't even tell if they're responsible? I wouldn't. So um, I was just hope that this could help somebody, give you some information. So there are three types of scores out there. There's your personal credit score, there's your business credit score, and of course there is that bank credit score as well. They may not call it a bank credit score, but there is a score that identifies how much you have in your bank account. Once again, I'm going to put that range below so that you can see. And as a minimum, as I stated before, you guys, we want to shoot to keep at least a minimum of 5000 in our business account. And I'm going to make another video so I can show you. If you don't have 5000 I'm going to show you how to use your net 30 accounts to get that money out and put it in your bank. All right? Guys, take care. Thank you. Subscribe, please, to Shamika Saves.